All right, so we want to find the force of friction acting on this block if it's in static equilibrium. We know the tension, we know the mass, we know the, the slope of the ramp. Uh, we also know this thing here, mu s. Uh, that's the coefficient of static friction. Uh, this number here depends only on the two materials in contact and the surface conditions. So I haven't actually specified what the materials in contact are, like what the box is made of and what the ramp is. But you could, I guess if you had a table, you could pick that number out or generally on a test or something, you'll just be given this number. Um, just to put it into perspective, if you had something like metal on metal, your, uh, your coefficient of static friction is going to be smaller. It'd be like 0 0.15 to 2, something like that. Uh, and if you're dealing with something like rubber on concrete, this number is going to be quite a bit higher. It could be like 0 0.5 to 0 0.9. Um, they have a bit of a range because it's important also the surface conditions. Like imagine if it's a little bit dusty or something, uh, obviously that's going to have an effect on the friction between the two surfaces. All right, other thing to say about friction is that friction always opposes the impending slip. So imagine, uh, imagine if we took this guy out of the picture and we just had a block on a ramp. Well, if there was enough friction here, we'd have gravity kind of trying to make it want to slide this way, but if it's not sliding, it's because friction is pulling it or preventing it from falling down. It's basically applying a force in the opposite direction, which is uh, opposite the impending slip, which would be in that direction. All right, uh, but in this case, we do have, you know, the, if the box is here by itself, gravity would want to make it kind of slide this way, but also this guy's pulling this way, so we don't really know actually which way the impending slip is by just uh, our first glance. So uh, with all that said, I guess let's just get started and we can draw our free body diagram. So let's put it up here and uh, we'll label it, just go free body diagram. All right, uh, just to simplify this problem, we're going to assume that everything is acting through the mass center and there's no moments caused by any of the different forces acting on it, but we'll get to that sort of stuff in future problems. Um, so let's talk first about the, the weight. The weight's gonna come straight down here. It's going to equal mass times gravity, and we have mass 90 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. That gives us about 833 newtons. We have another force here, the normal force. Uh, it just acts normal to the surface. Uh, we have the tension going off from the side, so tension, and that was equal to 400 newtons. And uh, we're gonna draw friction on here. I don't actually know which, fric which way friction is gonna go, so I'm just gonna assume a direction, make sense that it might be resisting it from slipping down the hill. So we're just gonna write friction there. And what friction is equal to, it's pretty simple, it's just mu s times n, just this, the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. If this object was moving, if it was already sliding but still in static equilibrium, uh, then we'd be using mu k, which is actually, it would be slightly smaller than mu s, but we'll worry about that later. This is, we're, we've already said that this block is in static equilibrium, so we use the static coefficient of friction. All right, uh, what we can do actually, so we can, we can, to solve this problem for f, I'm going to go and draw on uh, a coordinate axis that's not horizontal and vertical. Uh, I'm going to call this x prime, and I'm going to call this y prime. And this is going to be up 20 degrees off the horizontal, and that actually makes this angle in here 20 degrees as well. So that's just going to, you'll see why in a second, uh, it'll make it so we don't actually have to solve specifically or explicitly for n. Um, so I guess uh, we can just, in one step, basically we can solve what the force of friction is. Uh, we're going to solve for the sum of forces in the x prime direction. And looking at that, uh, basically, we want the x prime component of this force here for t, which is basically going to be kind of like the projection onto that axis. And it's actually really simple. It's just 400 newtons, the magnitude, times uh, cos of 20 degrees. So, first of all, uh, we have 400 times cos of 20. Okay, that was that guy. Uh, we also have friction, right? We're saying this is in the positive x prime direction. Uh, we don't have to consider n here because it's perpendicular, so there's actually no component in the x prime direction. And then weight here, well, its component in the x prime direction is going to look something like that. So it's going to be negative 833 newtons times, that would be a sine of 20. 
right? That's the component in the x prime direction. So uh, we said this is in static equilibrium, so that's all equal to zero. Uh, so we basically just get, uh, this is 376 plus f minus, uh, this guy works out to be about 302. And that's all equal to zero. And that at the end of the day, that's going to give us our force of friction here. Um, it's going to be, well, 302 minus 376. So that'll be negative 74 newtons. Um, so this negative sign here just indicates that the direction of the friction force is pointing down the ramp. So actually, we just assumed it to be in the wrong direction. Um, so basically, it means it's working against the person. And the only way we could tell that was by doing this problem. Uh, we weren't able to figure that out by inspection alone. Uh, so yeah, he, basically what's going on is he's pulling hard enough that the crate won't slide away. It's not going to start sliding down the ramp. Um, but he needs to pull harder, basically, if he wants to overcome the weight of the, the crate and also the friction force, too, uh, in order to slide the box up the ramp.